It's been an extraordinary year. You faced unprecedented challenges. COVID-19, lockdown, furlough, social distancing. Words we're now living with daily. But you've succeeded against the odds. And our judges have done their job to their usual high standards. Let's celebrate the 40th anniversary year of Pride in the Job. Together, we've done the competition proud. It's time to feel the pride. Let's meet the best of the UK house building industry and celebrate the Pride in the Job Regional Awards 2020. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Pride in the Job 2020. It's great to have you here with us on this once in a lifetime virtual event. At least I hope it's a once in a lifetime event. But whilst we're here creating history with the first virtual event ever to occur at Pride in the Job, I can't wait to get back to our usual venue with you all next year. The Manchester Hilton, where we can shut the door on social distancing. Sorry, that's not the right picture. Hang on, let's try that again. It worked fine in rehearsals. Yes, okay, that's the Hilton, but I'm not Superman. How did I get up here? Not very convincing, is it? Okay, that's better, thank you. I look forward to seeing you all here again next year when we won't have to do COVID-19 inductions and use hand sanitising stations. In saying that, I must admit how impressed I've been with the industry and particularly our region here in the North West with how we've responded to the situation. You have done us proud, just as you always do. The way COVID-19 site precautions have been embraced by management and trades alike is a real credit to you. That's how we do things in the Northwest, through teamwork. Talking of teamwork, I'd like to welcome my teammate for the afternoon, someone who may be familiar to you from previous Pride in the Job Awards. He's made stand-up and panel appearances on Comedy Central, BBC One, BBC Three, and Sky One, and we're delighted to welcome him back. Ladies and gents, it's Andrew Ryan. Hello, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, just got to do an award ceremony. Yeah, builders. In, one second, builders in the northwest getting awards. I know. I know you couldn't write it. It's mad, isn't it? Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. See ya. Bye. How are you doing? You all right? I'm very good, thank you. Are you new? Yes. You new? Okay, cool. So, hello, everybody. Uh, Andrew Ryan here. You can probably tell I'm from Europe, and uh, it's my first time doing an award ceremony outside the EU, and I'm very excited. Uh, it's proud to, I'm proud to be here, part of another Pride in the Job Awards. Uh, it is great to be here. It's good to see everybody as well in such a, a rather different format than usual. Normally, we would all be in like a big hotel in Manchester, in the Hilton or the Marriott, you know, having a great time, getting drinks, having food, meeting new colleagues, you know, chatting to older colleagues and stuff like that, making new contacts. But obviously, we are in the middle of a different situation which we all know about. So, I just want to say, for me, I've always been consistently impressed by the professionalism and the dedication of the UK house builders, especially when they turn up on time to do the job. I hope that you've all been having a really good global pandemic. Uh, mine's been fantastic. I've been away from my family for most of it, which has been great. And uh, fingers crossed, next year's pandemic is equally as good. During the pandemic, obviously, you get to miss a lot of family events, which for some people is a good thing. For me, it's a brilliant thing. Uh, my sister celebrated her 10th year wedding anniversary, and we were supposed to have a big party for that. And I remember speaking to my sister about it. I rang her up and I said, you know, do you still love your husband, Michael, after 10 years of being married? And she said the most wonderful thing, because when you're in the middle of a pandemic and you're spending 24 seven together, it's very difficult. She said to me, Andrew, I love Michael more today than I did yesterday, and I will love him more tomorrow than I do today. And I thought, wow, that's real love, isn't it? And she said, what I mean by that is, Andrew, I love him more tomorrow than I do today because tomorrow he's a day closer to dying. 
And the thing is, you learn a lot about your family, don't you, when you have lockdown, right? I love my family. Like, they're really, really good at a distance, right? But my mother, a great woman, right? I remember, like, she's a very typical Irish woman, you know? She used to ask you questions, right? And then answer those questions in the same sentence, right? A fantastic thing parents do, right? I remember once my mum rang me up one September, and she rang me up and she went, Andrew, do you know your brother, Ian? I was like, I do, yeah, yeah, like he's my brother. She goes, well, I just wanted to tell you something about your brother Ian. Your brother Ian is thinking about proposing to his girlfriend on Christmas Day. I said, what are you telling me that for? It's September. She said, I just wanted to warn you. If your brother Ian rings you on Christmas Day to tell you that he's engaged, I want you to act surprised. I said, well, why didn't you not bloody tell me then? And I'd be surprised, right? And guess what? Christmas Day, my brother gets engaged, never even rang me, right? Sent me a text, one word, no emotion, engaged. I didn't know whether to get married or locked in the toilets, right? I rang my mother back up and I was like, Mammy, come here, do you know your son Ian? She was like, I do, yeah. I said, well, he's just after telling me he's after getting engaged. What? He's engaged? He's not told me yet, you spoiled my bloody surprise as well. When I was growing up as a kid, my parents used to pay me money to behave at family events. Used to get a bit of pocket money for like doing jobs around the house. I'm sure during lockdown, you've had your kids doing jobs for you, you know, to keep them busy while they're not at school, right? And I remember, you know, I used to have to go to the petrol station, get the bread, the milk, the butter, the bacon, come home. I might get, you know, like uh, five euro. I might get to stay up a half an hour late. I might find out who my dad was. You know what I mean? But like, when, now that I'm older and I'm in my thirties, Right? My mum still gets me to do work for her around the house and I don't even live in the country. Right? She's outsourced to work. She rang me up recently. She said, Andrew, I need you to do me a favour. She goes, your sister Kira has put on a lot of weight recently. I need you to ring her up and have a go with her for putting on all the weight. Now, can you imagine that? The damage to her self-esteem that somebody from another country who hasn't seen her physical appearance for six months, he's just going to ring her up out of the blue. I did it, right, because there was 10 euro in it. Right, so I rang my sister up and I was like, hi, Kira, how are you? She goes, yeah, Andrew, I'm great. I'm like, ooh, you sound fat. Jeez, I'm on Google Maps, I can see you from here. During the pandemic, you know, people are a lot more conscious about safety and security. My parents have gone completely overboard, right? My parents live in Cork, I live in London, right? My dad rang me up and he said, Andrew, I need you to post home the house keys. I was like, are you serious? Why? He goes, security, you can never be too careful, right? I said, why? He goes, well, Andrew, you could go out tonight in London, you could drop the house keys, someone could pick them up, they could fly over to Cork, they could come down to the house and they could rob the house. That's what could happen. I said, really, I don't think that's gonna happen, right? And you know what the strange thing about this is? If you ever go and visit my parents' house, right? Next to their front door, there's a purple flower pot. You go over to that, you lift that flower pot up, it's near the right window, you lift it up, there's a set of keys there for the front door, right? So you know what? My parents live at 56 Glenwood, Carrigaline, County Cork. Off you go, fill your boots. All you'll find in the house is a broken stand of stair lift and a house full of religious bigotry. What I've been trying to do recently, obviously, is uh, trying to save a little bit of money, okay? So, and we all, we're all trying to save a bit of money, aren't we? You know what I mean? So I got a new mobile phone, and I went into the phone shop to buy this new mobile phone, right? Absolutely very, very happy with the phone. But while I was in there, the sales assistant, right, you know, they want to make money as well. So they started to try and sell me insurance for the phone, you know? And I didn't want insurance because it's an extra nine pound, nine, 10 pound a month. So what he did was he started to ask me questions to see what I would do if something happened to the phone, right? And I didn't want the insurance. He said to me, now, Mr. Ryan, you've signed up to this amazing new phone today. I want to ask you how you're going to protect yourself if something happens to that phone. I have a duty of care. I need to ask you a few questions about insurance. I'm like, I don't want insurance. He goes, no, I have to do it. I'm like, okay. He said, uh, he goes, what are you going to do, Mr. Ryan? What are you going to do if you lose your phone? You know, when you lose your mobile phone, you ring it from the landline. You're like, oh, God, I've got to find me phone. You're looking around the house for it. You find it down the back of the settee and you pick it up and you're like, oh, my God, one missed call. You rang yourself, right? This guy goes to the next level again. He goes, what are you going to do, Andrew, if you drop your phone down the toilet? I said, listen, when I'm standing over a toilet, I'm normally holding something else, right? Sorry, I'm normally holding something else, right? Then he escalates it and he goes, right, Mr. Ryan, he says, you go out tonight, you go to a pub. You put your phone on a table. Someone walks past that phone, picks it up, steals it, gone quick. Do you know how easy it is to steal a mobile phone? And you ring the police and you tell the police that phone's been stolen, they're gonna do nothing about it. 
So you might need insurance to protect yourself. You go to the pub, you put it down, someone swipes it, police aren't gonna look for it. So I'm gonna ask you again, how are you gonna replace your phone if it gets stolen? I said, well, based on what you've just told me, that they're easy to steal and the police aren't interested in looking for them. I'm just gonna nick one. And that's the thing about insurance, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta be a little bit careful about what you, what you take out, you know, but NHBC have been providing great cover for builders for many years. Even more impressive when we consider the 40 year history of the awards. At the start, it was all a little understated. Determined to raise the quality of house building in the UK, a small group of experts created a competition to identify the industry's most committed site managers. They chose just one winner in that first year, recognised in a low-key ceremony. Word got out, more and more house builders wanted to recognise their site managers. And over four decades, pride in the job has grown into the most highly regarded competition in our industry. It rewards excellence on sites of every size and shape. It acts as a beacon for customers looking for new homes of the highest quality. And it's the one every site manager wants to win. So let's celebrate 40 years of success and meet the Pride in the Job Quality Award winners 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our Pride in the Job Quality Award winners for the Northwest. Craig Allen of Morris Homes North. Gary Atherton of Barrett and David Wilson Homes Northwest. Nick Athorn of Stuart Milne Homes Northwest. Stephen Birch of Taylor Wimpy Manchester. Carl Catterall of Wayne Homes Northwest. Tom Chadwick of Taylor Wimpy Manchester. Tony Charnock of Bellway Homes Manchester. Martin Couch of Barrett Manchester. Steve Eldridge of Miller Homes Northwest. Peter Fallon of Barrett Manchester. Steve Goulden of Taylor Wimpy Manchester. Andy Halliday of Miller Homes Northwest. Craig Hancock of Barrett Manchester. Carl Harrison of Miller Homes Northwest. Albert Hassall of Vistry Mercia Region. Carl Henshaw of Bellway Homes Manchester. Phil Hollows of Taylor Wimpy Manchester. Chris Johnston of Anwill Homes Lancashire. Danny Jones of Taylor Wimpy Northwest. Stephen Jordan of Barrett Manchester. Mark King of Keepmount Homes Northwest. Carl Knights of Dutchy Homes Northwest. Neil Lally of Taylor Wimpy Northwest. Neil Lowton of G&G Joinery Services. Ben Maguire of Countryside Manchester and Cheshire East. Paul Marsden of William Marsden Homes. Wayne Marsden of Blower Homes Northwest. Daniel McCarran of Bellway Homes Manchester. Harry McAvoy of Bellway Homes Manchester. Paul McKeever of Bellway Homes Northwest. Will Mills of Barrett and David Wilson Homes Northwest. David Mitchell of Mitchell Homes. Simon Nix of Red Row Homes Lancashire. Sean O'Regan of Barrett Manchester. Alan Purdy of Red Row Homes Lancashire. Paul Roberts of Blower Homes Northwest. Neil Salisbury of Barrett Manchester. Dean Taylor of Morris Homes North. Dave Walsh of Taylor Wimpy Manchester. Dave Whitley of Stuart Milne Homes Northwest. David Williams of Stuart Milne Homes Northwest. Craig Wilson of JJ Latimer. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, 
That is what first-class site management in the Northwest looks like. It's a fantastic achievement that here in the Northwest, we have had so many pride in the job quality award winners this year. Standards do get higher and higher each year, and consequently, it gets harder and harder to judge the awards. That's a sure sign of the respect people give pride in the job, especially because this year, a lot of our winners have found themselves having to overcome the unprecedented challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's NHBC's Chief Executive Steve Wood to talk more about pride in the job in this extraordinary year. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be with you all today, even in this virtual world, for this Pride in the Job awards ceremony. It should be more fun than any of the other Zoom calls I've been on, that's for sure. Of course, this isn't how we'd like to be celebrating with you all, but extraordinary, unprecedented times call for a different approach. I am delighted, not to say really proud, that we've been able to continue with the Pride in the Job competition this year. In my view, in NHBC's view, it is extremely important to recognise the elite within our profession, to acknowledge your achievements and to toast your success in being quality award winners. Apart from it being a special year because of COVID-19, it's also special because it is the 40th anniversary of Pride in the Job. So let's celebrate the Oscars of the housebuilding industry in its 40th year. Cheers. Pride in the Job really is the most highly regarded competition in house building. I don't really need to tell you that it's one that all site managers want to win, with some describing it as the pinnacle of their career. Over the past 40 years, NHBC has recognised the very best site managers across the UK, those showcasing best practice, delivering an excellent product on site and setting standards for others to aspire to. We're committed to continuing to celebrate the vital role that site managers and their teams play with NHBC working alongside you, ensuring that new homes are delivered on time, on safe sites, and to exacting construction quality standards. Our judges have singled you out from more than 11,000 site managers across the country. Each of you has stood out for the exceptional quality you have delivered and for your passion in getting things right, whatever pressure you are put under. You are responsible for building homes that make a real difference to people's lives. Don't forget that. Homes which your companies and indeed the house building industry as a whole are very proud of. The ethos and standards you instill in sight resonate very strongly with NHBC's purpose, what we're here for, the very qualities that have underpinned the Pride in the Job Awards since inception in 1981. I know you'll all be on the edge of your seats hoping to go through to the next round of the competition, but before we get to that, I really want to emphasize that whether or not you go on to win a seal, a regional or even a national title, you have already achieved a level of excellence that thousands of other site managers can only dream of. You should be incredibly proud of what you've accomplished. I know your employers are, and I know your site teams certainly are. So please take a moment to reflect on what you've achieved and above all, to enjoy the recognition you so richly deserve. Best of luck to all of you. Thank you. We've met our Northwest Quality Award winners for 2020. And of course, that's not the final stage of the competition. Now, it's time to announce what you've all been waiting to hear. Who's made it through to the next stage of the competition? And who has won a highly coveted Seal of Excellence award? What makes a Seal of Excellence winner? Is it the exceptional leadership skills? Is it happy customers? Is it the ability to go the extra mile in search of superlative quality? In truth, it's a combination of all those and more besides. And the site managers whose names we're about to announce are truly among the very best in their field. Well, come on then, Darren. Tell us, tell us who they are. Okay, our first Seal of Excellence winner today is from the Small Builder category. The extent to which each stage is planned and then executed continues to impress the judges year on year. Build quality here has never dipped. From JJ Latimer, congratulations, Craig Wilson.
Congratulations, Craig. I know you win every year. You're very good at what you do, but it's getting a bit boring now. Next up is a site manager from the large builder category. A steady hand to steer the ship. This site demonstrated some great substructure brickwork, along with crisp finishings to paintwork and ceramic tiling. From Taylor Wimpy, Manchester, congratulations, Steve Goulden. Congratulations, Steve. You're very good at steering a ship. If only you were the captain on the Titanic. Our next winner demonstrated their prowess and managerial skills very early in this year's competition. A stunning location with the construction standards to match. From Bellway Homes, Manchester, congratulations to Carl Henshaw. Congratulations, Carl. Bellway Homes, a fantastic company to work for. You're always winning stuff, and fingers crossed, next year you'll be there or thereabouts. Our next winner is from the medium builder category. Amongst other great qualities, this site demonstrated some of the best first fixed plumbing witnessed on this year's tour. From Stuart Milne Homes, Northwest, congratulations, Dave Whitley. Congratulations, Dave. Always been a fan of medium-sized builders, so I'm delighted that you won, and well done on turning off the taps. Our next winner has excelled many times in the competition. His general organisational skills and his ability to interpret drawing details into reality are second to none. From Miller Homes Northwest, congratulations, Andy Halliday. Congratulations, Andy. Well done. You've scored a birdie or an eagle this year. Next year, you never know. You might, might get a par or a bogey. We never know, but well done. Our next Seal of Excellence winner has knuckled down over the past 12 months and has really demonstrated his calibre. First fix works, including the plumbing services and the electrical works, deserve to be noted for their high quality. From Taylor Wimpy, Manchester, congratulations to Phil Hollows. Congratulations, Phil. Well done for knuckling down over the last 12 months. I don't know what you were doing the previous years, but well done for, for working the last 12 months, knuckling down, doing a bit of work. Well done. Next up is a site which thoroughly impressed the judges from the outset. A great setup with each build stage thereafter demonstrating top quality work. The foundations and ring beams were particularly crisp. From Barrett, Manchester, congratulations, Stephen Jordan. Well done, Stephen. Congratulations on winning and building those foundations from crisps. Our next winner is a new entrant to the Seal of Excellence category. Some superb detailing to vertical tile hanging, along with great workmanship demonstrated by all trades on site. From Mitchell Holmes, congratulations to David Mitchell. Great stuff, David. Always been a fan of hanging tiles vertically. It's a, it's a, it's a keen interest of mine. Uh, so next time, keep hanging tiles that way and you'll, big tiles. Love, to, and David Mitchell Holmes. I love how you've named it after yourself, bit, bit arrogant. Our next winner is producing work which excels on every level. There is great camaraderie on site too. The brickwork shows some superb qualities 
with the corbelling details shining through. From Vistri Mercia region, congratulations, Albert Hassall. Well done, Albert. Sounds like your building sites are great places to work. Yeah, plenty of breaks, I'd say. Stop having breaks, start working. Our next winner is a chap whose electrical first fix was installed with the straightest cable runs the judges had seen. Excellent detailing to the remainder of the first fix too. From Miller Homes Northwest, congratulations to Carl Harrison. Well done, Carl. I mean, just to have a straight fix wire is out of this world, and we're delighted that he's won, aren't we, Darren? Over the moon. Uh, you couldn't be more straighter. Our next Seal of Excellence winner today is a real gentleman, always going above and beyond to find that last piece of the jigsaw puzzle which brings the whole project together. His build standards continue to go from strength to strength. From Barrett, Manchester, congratulations, Sean O'Regan. Congratulations, Sean O'Regan, a beautiful Irish name there representing the Irish community in Manchester. As always, we are brilliant. Our final Seal of Excellence winner today demonstrated some high quality work to the insulation in the floor slab, along with some neat touches at first fix and pre-completion stages. Welcome to the competition. From Taylor Wimp in Manchester, congratulations to Tom Chadwick. Congratulations, Tom. Well done. I hear this is his first sight. First year, first sight, first award. So you've a 100% record, Tom. And the only way to go after that is down. So, ladies and gentlemen, 12 great sites, 12 great managers, 12 truly impressive house building developments. Well done to all our Seal of Excellence winners. You're already the best among the top 1% of site managers in the UK. But of course, we're here to celebrate an even more select group, the very best of the best in this region. Let's take a moment to reflect on what that means. What does it feel like to be a regional Pride in the Job award winner? To get a regional, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. It's, it's so emotional, it's unbelievable. In this climate, you know, another award winner, it's got, it's got to be good for the business. I've shed a few tears leading up to this event. This means a lot to me personally. I couldn't really believe it. Sort of like sort of had to look and say, you know, is that really me? Absolutely fantastic. Can't put this in the words. I've won a, I've won a few, this is the best one yet. It's probably 17, 18 years of hard work and it's a dream come true. You get the flags flying on the site, you get the signs up, everybody knows and it kind of gives that little bit of a vibe. I feel really honoured, to be honest with you, to be stood here talking to you right now. I just looked around at my two daughters at the time uh, and my wife sat beside me and uh, I think they were over the moon. That makes me feel with pride. I've just had a knee replacement. I thought if I trip up, I'm going to get the biggest round of applause of the night. Let's tell everybody that we've won this award and we can do it again. And we can do it for you. The competition gets a hold of you, you want to come back. Once you get the first award, just make sure you want to go again and again. It's a motivator within the housing industry and long may it continue. Wasn't expecting it. I'm really, really proud. It's an honour for all the boys. Dream come true. It's time to find out who among today's winners will go on to represent the North West at the Pride in the Job Supreme Awards in 2021. We're about to name the best of the best. They're all quality award winners, they're all Seal of Excellence Award winners. And now we're ready to meet the elite in three of the categories that make up the Pride in the Job Awards. 
We will start with the regional winner in the small builder category for builders registering up to 50 homes a year with NHBC. Our winning site impressed the judges for the overall superb quality displayed at each build stage. The prior thought demonstrated and the execution of the work was truly awesome. Darren, can you tell us who the winner is, please? Small category winner, Craig Wilson of JJ Latimer. Congratulations, Craig. Well done. You were off to the Supreme Awards 2021. Hopefully I'll see you there. Hopefully I'll be hosting it if they book me. Do you know what I mean? A few drinks, you know what I mean? You know, hook me up on the WhatsApp. All right, we'll sort something out. Up next, the medium category for site managers working for builders registering between 51 and 1,000 homes each year. Our winning site made an impact on the judges for the drive and determination in reaching for higher standards across the board year on year. And yes, the first fixed plumbing was that good. Now, Darren, it's over to you. Please reveal the winner. Medium category winner, Dave Whitley of Stuart Milne Homes, Northwest. Congratulations, Dave, on winning. And I've heard the first fix plumbing was very good, but that's not always the main thing, is it, Darren? Not always. Not always, no, plenty of other things. So well done, Dave, really good stuff. Our final category today is the large builder category for site managers working for builders registering more than 1,000 homes each year. Our winning site made an impact on the judges for the exacting nature of his organizational skills, the drive for team working approach, and his ability to push for high quality standards across all lines. Darren, will you please tell us who the winner is? Large category winner is Stephen Jordan of Barrett Manchester. Stephen lad, well done. Congratulations on being the large category winner. A brilliant result for you and your team. Congratulations to all our winners this afternoon. We hope you enjoyed our virtual awards here for NHBC. And a big thank you to Darren for inviting me to take part. Darren, it's our first time we've met. We've been getting on like a house on fire. Um, I hope to someday host the Northwest Pride in the Job Awards uh, in person, in a hotel where we can have food and we can have drink. But for now, I'm out of here, Darren, all right? I've got to go, I've got stuff to do, all right? And listen, a little bit of feedback for you. Can you just stop texting me? It's a bit weird, okay? All right, all the best, mate. Take care of yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a highly unusual year at the Pride in the Job Regional Awards, but we can all see that the quality of your work is better than ever. So congratulations to all our winners. Receiving a Pride in the Job Award is a tremendous achievement and you should all be exceptionally proud. Of course, our warmest congratulations go to our regional award winners. We look forward to you joining us at the Pride in the Job Supreme Awards. Finally, thank you to everyone for supporting these awards, our winners and their teams, all of our NHBC building inspectors and inspection managers, our judges and our production team. Goodbye for now and enjoy your celebrations today.